just the other day, I had a, I got a call from this woman. She says, hey, Matt, I want you to list my house. So I went and met her. Ooh. And I was like, like, I don't know you. How did you How did you meet me? She said, my lawyer in Penticton said that she listens to the Corona Real Estate Podcast all the time and said that you should hire, I should hire you. So I just went. Damn, man. I know. So, like, that is a listing. I Right after this podcast, I'm going to do the photos for that listing. So, like, that's. Nice. Yeah, so that's straight up. 100% from the podcast from people listening independent tickets so out of town welcome to the 12th episode of oh my pod my name is justin and i'm celine and today we have a different kind of guest than our usual guest. We're usually talking to people in like the podcasting industry um, but today we've got a realtor slash podcaster. So we're sticking with the podcasting thing a bit. Um, so today's guest is Matt Glenn. He's a realtor with Century 21 based right here in Kelowna, BC. We're in Kelowna, by the way. I don't even know if we've said that, but we are in Kelowna. <laughs> um, he's a father and husband, a new father. He's got a two month old baby. So congratulations on that. That's really cool. Um, and he hosts the Kelowna Real Estate Podcast. So alongside his co-host, Taylor Atkinson, who's a, a mortgage broker, a top performing mortgage broker. Um, so Matt, thank you for coming on this show. It's going to be cool to chat about podcasting and, and real estate and all the above. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for having me on. Glad to be here. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing super well. Yeah. My baby just turned, uh, we had a new baby just turned two months old today. So we're, uh, big deal. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Boy or girl? Oh boy. Julian. Oh, nice. (laughs) How, how do you feel being a new dad? What's what's I love it? Like? it. I love every curious. second of it. Like you know that we have, it's it's true. You do get a little less sleep. I think we're averaging like three or four hours at a time. But uh, oh man, <laughs> yeah, not per night, just in a row, right? So like we get the, yeah, 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 you know, so yeah. It's uh yeah, but it's been it's awesome. It's great. And you've set your business up in a way where you you have time to spend with with family. It seems right. Oh, very much. And my wife is also my assistant. So like. Oh, good. Hey, awesome. look at yeah. So we are we work out of our house a lot. Like we're doing this podcast out of my house. Do we do our podcast yep. out of my house? And uh, yeah, it's we do a lot of stuff from home. But and then as a realtor, awesome. You're around like, the city of quite a bit, but uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that's great. Well, congratulations again on that. That's um, that's sort of part of our five year plan, but still yeah. in the future. <laughs> Recommend it. Um, okay. yeah. Yep. Um. So. Just first of all, like you're also based in in Kelowna, so why why Kelowna? Like why how did you end up in Kelowna, and why did you choose to to do your life here? I I grew up in Vernon, so I've been in the Okanagan pretty much my whole life. Same, yeah, yeah. And then I went to uh, after high school, I went to Vancouver for five years, six years, and I liked that too. Um, then I just decided I wanted the Okanagan life, and figured I'd try Kelowna instead of Vernon this time, and I have not looked back. Mm-hmm. It's been awesome. Yeah. How how old are you? Uh, 37. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I've been back in um, since 2009. So I've lived here since 2009. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Great. Nice. Uh, so onto like what you do professionally. So what, obviously you're, you're a real estate agent, but I also saw on, um, your podcast biography that you, you are open about how you've created like passive income from real estate yeah. investing as well, which I think is super interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, what excites you about, about your industry, about your business? Like we, what happened was I, my wife and I bought a house in 2012. We bought downtown Kelowna and like, we just bought a house because we wanted to buy a house. So there's no reason, like we didn't have some goal in mind when we bought the house. Like we just wanted to be homeowners. So yeah. Place to live. Yeah. Yeah. So we bought our house, 280,000, average small house in Kelowna and then we lived there for a few years and we got a our assessment and it was like 500 and something I could not it, I could not wrap my head around how much money I had just made I at the time it was like I made more money my house made more money than I did at my career and I was like this is crazy what the heck yeah and it happened again <laughs> cool. again and then I at that point I still didn't know that we could use that that equity to buy more real estate I like I just did not know and then mm-hmm. I had a realtor friend who told me that. And at the same time, another mortgage broker said the same thing. And it like exploded my mind. I was like, you can, you can use, wait, I don't know about that. What well, is that? You, if you have the equity in your home, you can basically refinance your mortgage, pull that equity out and use that as a down payment on more properties. 
right? That makes that's that makes problem. sense. That's very cool. So like I didn't know that, and what I did find out, like now that I'm in the industry, everyone seems to know that. But at the time, it was it was like a paradigm shift in my life, and I just at that point I was like, hey, no, I'm going to be. I want to be a real estate agent. I want to basically spread the word. I want to invest. I want to like do this, buy rental properties to help cash flow and like build my long-term financial health. And I basically just want yep. to tell people about it. That's the, that's the whole reason why I even am an agent. And it's funny, I do that and my, my business now is not helping very many investors. It, 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 I do, but I just sell the regular house. But the whole reason why I got into the agent, be an agent was for that reason. It's just Yeah, you found something eye-opening and life-changing and you wanted to, to build a career around sharing that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And the same with the podcast too. Yeah. That's what we're doing with that also. So Yeah. Nice. I yeah, I definitely want to get into that because like I said, I think the majority of people who are listening are just trying to learn about um either they're an independent podcaster who wants some tips yeah. on what, what the heck they should do, or they're maybe an entrepreneur or a business owner who wants to learn about how they can use their podcast to add value to their their like business and their bottom line and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so what it sounds like to me, like I, I, I'm always really curious about like how people use their time. And when I look at somebody like you, who like you, you're obviously um, successful and you've, you, you probably don't have a ton of spare time. Like you've got, you've got a kid now yeah. and yeah. multiple things going on yeah. yet. You're still taking the time to go and do the podcast. And so the first thing that I think of when I see that is I'm like, okay, well then it must be, important in some way there has to be something very important there if someone like you is going to actually take the time to go and do it um, because you don't have a lot of spare time so why did you start the podcast like why did you decide you're 20 episodes in now so you've already passed the you've already passed the threshold of where people usually quit um um which i'll talk about later but why yeah like what what brought you into it and also what number are you guys on I'll, I'll tell you really quick. I'm happy you asked me that. Okay, so we're your episode, your episode twelve. Yeah. But let me tell you some a stat really quickly yes, please. Um, from the last one that I pulled. Yeah. Um. So here, give me one second. I have to actually. Oh, Google. I didn't even know um, that threshold. Oh yeah, you've you've. I think you're actually yeah. one episode off. Okay, it's right here. So check this out. This yeah. is this is gross. So. Our last guest that we just interviewed, he has 800 episodes. He's been doing it since 2014. And I I asked him, I said, 90% of podcasts don't get past episode three. So that's 1.8 million people who quit. Out of the 200,000 left, 90% will quit after 20 episodes. That's another 180,000 gone. So to be in the top 1%, don't quit. (laughs) To be in the top 1% of podcasts, you only need to publish 21 episodes. Whoa. So... The industry looks super diluted. It looks it looks I- I- incredibly um, saturated. But truly, at the at in in the actual consistent shows that are providing value to audiences, it's not a big amount. And that's what we're, that's what we're trying to say. That's, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Long winded way of asking why the heck did you start podcasting? <laughs> well, like I said, we started it like to to spread the word about real estate and like obviously we love our region, love Kelowna, so that too. Yep. Then also like we did it for name recognition we did it for a little bit of clout also just to yep. talk about like taylor and i both are 100 percent in real estate like we both were like he's a mortgage broker i'm a realtor we both it's own, your whole life yeah yeah we both invest we both own our own homes like basically both of us all we do is real estate so yeah. why don't we just talk about it and like, spread what we know because we know mm-hmm. like we said we're in this every single day and have been for yeah. years so it's uh yeah we did it um Basically, yeah, for name recognition, spread the word, and uh, yeah, just to talk about what we love. Yeah, and I found that one thing that you've been doing is you've been you've been interviewing people, um, and I can't remember if you also did solo episodes, but I definitely saw that you were interviewing people. Yeah, you've done solo episodes yeah. too. Yeah, well, I do think it's cool, like the 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 people that you've had on so far. Like you're you're you know you're bringing on huge industry experts and and leaders onto your show yeah um mm-hmm. and yeah. man like you said i mean it sounds like kind of like kind of a bit um transactional to say like clout but you, you're 100 percent right like it's yeah. uh just the way the, the world works it's like kind of who you know in a lot of ways and um if i want to work with you and you're a real estate agent and i see that you're involved on a podcast episode with 
this person or that person who, who, you know, is a big name. Yeah. I mean, immediately now, now, well, now I trust you. Well, like, yeah. Also when I, like I listen to a lot of podcasts I have for years and years and mm-hmm. like, I feel like I know these people. Like they're my friend. I feel like they're in the car with me. Like, I right? so, like, yeah, yeah, totally. I hire my friend to work with me if I, if like, that's what they're doing. Right. So like, yeah, I've had that comment already. Like a lot of people that I know, say that exact thing like uh, we enjoy your episodes it's lots of fun and we uh yeah listen to it every week and it's good so like i do you, yeah. do you find that your your audience is mostly other realtors or are there people is it a split of people who are also looking to uh, invest in real estate in Kelowna? taylor and i kind of assumed it was mostly realtors because that's who talks mm-hmm. about it the most but just the other day i had a, i got a call and this woman, she says, hey, Matt, I want you to list my house. So I went and met her. Ooh. And I was like, "Like, I don't know you. How, did you. how did you meet me? She said, my lawyer in Penticton said that she listens to the Kelowna Real Estate Podcast all the time and said that you should hire, I should hire you. So I just went. Damn, man. I know. So like that is a listing. I Right after this podcast, I'm going to do the photos for that listing. So like, but that's. Nice. Yeah, so that's straight up 100% from the podcast, from people listening in Penticton. So out of town. That's so, crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's the the potential return on investment. I mean, I, I we have a client yeah. who is also in real estate in Kelowna, yeah. and um, within the first eight episodes, they had somebody listening from Toronto who yeah. contacted them based on one of their episodes, and then they sold a listing from yeah. that podcast episode. So it's yeah. like, it's like okay, there now you've paid for your podcast for the next three years. Like, <laughs> like so I was telling Taylor, I was like. This one listing will pay for all of our equipment and uh, for us to get edited for like two or three years. Like, yeah, all is yeah. For, from one. And, and 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 you're just at the start. I mean, the you're thing. you're also looking at exponential growth as you as you get more listeners and more recognition. Yeah. You're going to get more leads like that, and and also just like industry people who. You know, like I know that our client goes to a lot of real estate events around Canada and they do have people come up and say, I listened to your podcast because I wanted to learn about this. I listened to your podcast Mm -hmm. because I wanted to learn about that. And you just have happened to find the best possible name that you could have found for a podcast. Um, Sorry, Celine, what were you going to say? I was going to say that like looking at where people are listening to to our clients is also really interesting because you would think this is so location bound, it's bound, it's only Kelowna. But it's not true because I feel like everybody is interested in the Okanagan real estate because it's so booming and everybody wants a a place here, a house or an apartment or something. And so actually what we're seeing is that people from all over are listening, not just Well, what about Sing- 50 people from Singapore? We got 50 downloads from Singapore yeah, on, the, on our real like, estate podcast here. It's Not ours, but the yeah. one that we produce, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the one that we produce. That's, that's yeah. yeah. So Kelowna is very much a destination city, right? So people... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, I told this the other time that I was recording um, our clients and... I was telling them that years and years ago, when I was still living in Italy, didn't know Justin, had no connection whatsoever to Canada, I was watching YouTube videos of Canadian YouTubers and they would go to Kelowna in the summer and I knew what Kelowna was. Like, I'm talking like five, six, seven years ago. And like me, it's from an Italian tiny town, 5,000 people, I know what Kelowna is. And I feel like it's for so many people exactly like that. Yeah, it is a bit like we are. We have put ourselves a bit in the corner, like naming it the Kelowna Real Estate Podcast. And I was going to say, the, yeah. like, so now we're like a city, one hundred fifty thousand people or so, and mm-hmm. just real estate. So like this yep. and real estate. So like we're not going to get millions of listeners. It's not a, no. It's never really our goal. But like we can capital. Like this is a big market in itself, right? And it's kind of oh for sure. You know, so it's not uh, that was not really our goal when we got into it, but. but uh, yeah, we just want to be known in our industry, right? So it was yeah. pretty. And it was pretty genius to to do what you did by naming it that way. I, I like oh, for sure. Ni- niching niching down like that was. I mean, we keep hearing over and over again. Like there's shows that get hundreds of thousands of downloads with almost no conversions, and then there's shows with a hundred downloads an episode that are bringing people in yeah, seven figures less. a year, yeah. yes. <laughs> and that's legit. Correct. Like that's yeah. straight from the source yeah. of people who are actually doing it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and one of the biggest like、um, suggestions that people have when starting a podcast, or for people that want to start a podcast, is you should、um, niche down to a group of people that has three thing- things in common. Like, for example, people that want to to move to Kelowna or that live in Kelowna and are interested in real estate or something like that, and something else, yeah. Yeah. for example, like three things in common, and that's like the perfect niche. And so for For that matter, you've done it amazingly. It's, yeah, yeah, nice. Thank you. It's been, it has. It honestly has worked out that way too. Like we are, we're happy about progress so far. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah.、Um, so, like digging into the podcast itself a little bit more. Yeah.、Um, so, are you guys doing things yourself, or are you outsourcing everything?、Uh, we outsource the editing to.、Um, A guy to to edit the episodes for us, but、mm-hmm. uh, as far as everything, like, we do all the setup. Like most of them are recorded at my house, which I live in McKinley in Cologne. Yep.、Uh, but Taylor lives in the Lower Mission. His house has been under renovation, so we're probably gonna, it's done now. So we're probably going to do half and half there. Or、mm-hmm. the person we're interviewing, like we go to their house. We don't do a lot of.、Uh, we do have done some virtual meetings like this one, but we have done mostly in person.、Um, cool. Yeah, just kind of more of our style doing that way. But、um, yeah, we we do all that. Like no nobody's helped us set anything up, so we've done all that. But we do have somebody edit our episodes.、Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. definitely very time consuming. Yeah, to edit. Yeah,、oh, yeah, yeah. Of, like that's not a skill set I have. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. I I I did all that. That's why. That's how I started this. Is I was、yeah. doing editing for a handful of people, like freelance. Yeah, and.、Um, Where we are now, I don't. I don't edit these. I we outsource it to our team、yeah. to do because、yeah. our team does it better, and and I I don't really I don't really love doing it. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, we the reason we ask that is because like you know if if people are hesitant about start starting a, a podcast or something like that for their business, a lot of times it's something to do with, um, like the the time or the the money or or it's not it's not so important or, um. Like yeah, like did did you did you have anybody who came to you and said, hey, you guys should start a podcast, or or did, were you guys just like going over some ideas on how to market your business or how to do like how did it come come about? We actually went、uh, last year. We went golfing, Taylor and I. We went golfing. It was just the two of us. We were at Tower Ranch. It was like an evening golfing. We were just talking. We're like we should start a podcast, and it was like. Let's do it, and we like kind of talk during four hours of golfing, whatever. And then by the end, like that was in the fall, and our plan was to get our first episode out at the beginning of the year, which we did. So we、mm-hmm. we kind of just made a plan during the fall and winter, and then come the new year, we just been releasing an episode a week. So it came like we went golfing and talked about this, and that's how the uh, uh, idea started, and we just kept it going. Like, and are you enjoying it so far?、Uh, what's that? Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, I love. We love it. It's like text each other, like yes, it's podcast day, recording day. We、uh, we enjoy it quite a bit. We've had good guests on too. Like we've had、uh, we had Caitlin Kessler on, who was a, a lawyer and a state planning lawyer, and like、okay. that episode was it was so much fun for us to record. And also, she was talking about how to buy real estate to set up your estate,、uh, the importance of wills, all this kind of stuff. It was all kind of it was all Kelowna based, and it was like a really nice episode and. The, Like those kind of days are,、uh, they make it worth it.、It's, it was awesome. Totally, yeah. It's it's a really cool thing to be able to to like learn from people on a call and then record it and then yeah, you know, share it and it's yeah, like it's it's、um, a really valuable thing that that we totally agree with.、Yeah. I mean, we're doing we we're doing it ourselves, so obviously, yeah, we, yeah. We yeah. Well, it's、that. kind of like we we think of a lot of topic that we want to talk about. Or that we're interested in, and then we just get an expert in on that topic, and then we,、uh, then we talk to them. About yeah, you learn too, right? So it's uh, yeah, it's- exactly. Yeah, you learn too. Yeah, you you talk to somebody, and you're curious, and yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I feel like that's like people don't think about that, but it's such a gain. Yeah, like for us、yeah. to talk to certain people, it's like. So much knowledge,、yeah. so much new stuff, new ideas. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's an excuse to talk to these people. Like we had,、uh, yeah, correct, that's what we say.、Yeah. That's what we say. We had Adam Checka on from the Kelowna City、uh, Planning Department, and like, yeah, oh, cool. We just got to pick his brain for an hour and ten minutes or something, and we learned so much. I was like, yeah, exactly. I would not talk to you mostly. Like I, I would talk to you about specific 
property and stuff like this, but not about this. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, uh, that's what, yeah. That's one thing that we literally say to people when we're trying to explain like the value of podcasts. It's like this gives you an excuse to talk to people who would otherwise like be very hard to reach. Like you don't just exactly. you don't just hop you don't just like email someone you're like, "Hey, can we have a call to chat?" Yeah. It's like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. not not really. Like that's not really a thing that people that that people do, but but if you say you want to come on the podcast, well, now you've got a platform yeah. that you you bring somebody on as a featured person. Yeah. And they they feel really grateful to to have been given a, a platform and and um and then you know you you give them a piece of of content that really represents who they are and um just an overall uh really positive thing. I mean, even this for us, like yeah. we we don't really have connections in real estate. I mean, we produce the, a podcast for uh like a really su- a successful um, company in Kelowna, but but other than that, like. It, it's it's kind of hard to get into circles, but you know you have a podcast, and so we've got something in common, and um, and yeah, we were able to 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 meet off that. Um, yeah, I it's funny too podcasting. So like about uh, uh, yeah, I, so I have, I'm I'm active on social media, right? So I have like eighteen yep. nineteen hundred Instagram followers, which is like not amazing, but it's also not nothing. And like I've been posting for years. Totally like five times a week, like at least like between like the stories and the posts, all this, like, and I have, I don't think I've ever gotten a call from somebody to say, Hey, I want you to list my house. I have gotten like inquiries mm-hmm. and like, Oh, this listing, like, is it still available? Can I, can I buy this listing? I have got that, but like nobody's ever asked me to buy their house. I have this podcast for five months, like I said, and I already am going to sell someone's house. And it just, it reaches people in a totally different way. Right. And we're really different yeah. manner. An episode a week. Right. So it's not, it's, Five times less than I'm doing on social media, but like hundred times more beneficial for my business. Yeah, this is what we preach to everybody. Yeah. This is what we say. Well, and I will. I, yeah, go. Sorry. It's it's just it's just the authenticity and the trust that you built through the podcast. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. We knew that when we started. We kind of had an idea, but like it has really opened doors for us that we. That That's we crazy to hear, man. Yeah, it, it's like. We, when Taylor and I started, we we're like, hey, we'll probably have to do this podcast for like probably like a year or two before we get any kind of feedback. Like Taylor's had mm-hmm. uh, people call him. Like I said, I have had people call me. Like I said, I've seen this house right now. And like, we're not that far in. Like we said, we're 19 or 20 episodes in. And it's. That's, cr- you're literally, yeah. yeah, you're literally 20 episodes in. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's ridiculous. That's like, that's like 20 hours of work. Like it's, it's not much, you well, know what I mean? Not. Like, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not. It, I talk all day, like in real estate, all you do is talk to people. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm just doing fucking who I want to with Taylor, who's like a good friend of mine. who's an awesome guy. And like, yeah, we yeah. Had a good time. And we talked to our guests. They have a good time. And like the podcasts are not at all draining to do. Like they're, it's invigorating yeah. for us to do the whole time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I feel yeah. the exact same way. And actually, yeah, 100%. Just, just briefly on that thing that you said earlier about like not getting anything from social media and then getting from the podcast, like yeah. our the the offer that we are doing now with Podigy is that we will someone will sit down for an hour a week and record their interview yeah. and then hand off the podcast to us. They'll do video and audio at the same time. Yeah. And from that, we create um from from them doing that four times a month, we create their entire monthly content. So we literally deliver them 30 social media clips. Yeah. Um, and then they can post daily these clips yeah. from the podcast, which is like getting the best of both worlds, because then you're not like, you're not doing social media in the way where you have to sit down and formulate what you're going to do and record and then post and all those things. You're, you're getting all your content delivered for the month. And it's all from yeah. the interview that you already had. Yeah. So it's like, it's like the beauty of like recycle and reuse and repurpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and you can just schedule it all and that's awesome. live your Back life. Burner. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, that's what Taylor and I need to do because yeah, we, yeah, we have, there is a technological uh, limitation test. So we are working through that, but yeah, we would need to do stuff like that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Getting, getting the content, um, using the content in all the ways that you can is actually like one of like, I mean, you can do everything with your podcast. Your podcast can be your newsletter. It can be LinkedIn articles. It can be your blog. It can be, uh, posted on your website in a, in a feed. And then on top of that, it can be all your YouTube videos, your YouTube shorts, your TikToks, your reels. Like if you have a, if you have people who are strategically using your one hour episode and turning it into like 
50 pieces of content again it's it's totally possible it's just a lot of like it's a it's a big um deliverable and who we're trying to work with now are our coaches mostly because um Mm -hmm. coaches have to post a lot of content on social media and just like it just takes people hours to to post to even by daily like they're just dreading it they just don't like doing it anymore yeah you know it is not the same honestly like it is not the same yeah we post as it is podcast it's so much more organic for us to do that yeah i of course i just i just saw it with justin especially because he has like um his music tiktok where he like uh, posts like stuff where he's singing and stuff and it's very draining to him like he hasn't done it in so long because he just like yeah. It just becomes such a chore, yeah. and, and you know you don't what? Want it to I was be getting the podcast is not like that. No. I was getting like a million views a video, and I still was dreading it. Like yeah. even though the results were absolutely ridiculous, I was yeah. still like my 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 lack of motivation to do that couldn't even be overcome by the results I was getting. Yeah. which just shows that like man, that's such a good sign that you're d- not doing what you're meant to be doing. I think because. <laughs> yes. Like, man, that was, but I was doing three videos a week with like, like I was, I was doing music production based stuff. And so the stuff was taking me a long time to do and like it and, but huge, huge results. And I just stopped. I just don't want to do it anymore. Really. I mean, it's just like kind of done. Um, but stuff like this yeah. yet, yet here we are recording a podcast that I don't know, we, we don't, we're not going to have a ton of, a ton of listens on this and, and, but like, I'm taking an hour doing this rather than doing that where I've got like, you know, quarter million followers because i i like there's just things that you're meant to do and things that you're not meant to do and i and i i totally yeah, yeah. like I, I know exactly what, what you mean. yeah 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 um but okay so we'll sort of like start wrapping it up but i have a question about about real estate in Kelowna yeah. because yeah. we are a young couple i'm 23 Celine is 26 yeah. and we are i'm old <laughs> <laughs> sure whatever <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't say I'm 26 though, because I decided once I turn 25, I'm just going to turn 25 over right. and over. Right. Right. Very yeah. cliche. Very 25. cliche. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, but like, what do what I like asking people to put themselves in my shoes? Like you, you know, you're sitting here in front of, you know, your laptop, and then after this, like you, you're thinking about how you're going to get anywhere to live in Kelowna. You know what I mean? Or, or is it just not even? Like what, what do you do as step one? How do you start building the, 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 the process now so that in five years we don't start and, and realize that we should have been working up to it the whole time? Yeah. You know, like the biggest thing is just getting in the market, like just buy anything you can to get in the market, like buy a condo, Mm -hmm. buy a $250,000 condo, just get in the market because like... Taylor and I just did an episode about this, about the difference between mm-hmm. not being in the market and being in the market. Like if you have okay. real estate is getting to wealth in so many different ways, right? So like it, it, it appreciates in value. So if you buy that $250,000 condo in five years, it's probably going to be 350,000, maybe 400,000. Uh, mm-hmm. Your mortgage is being paid down. So you, your appreciation is going up. Your mortgage is being paid down. Like that sounds like a lot like it's hard to get in the market, but like that difference over years is immense. Like it, it's exponential. Yeah. Like it's exponential. It's it's gonna it's yeah, it will very much set you apart. And it's easier. It's so much easier to buy to go from like one house to a like a bigger house or a nicer house than it is to go from not having a house into anything, right? So the first step is always the hardest, and then once you're in the market, you're in a fundamentally different position, and you can yeah. build yourself up. Uh, better so like my advice would be just do anything you can to just get in the market some way how do you find the right things though because in my head i like i see a condo come up and it's like whatever amount of money and i'm like well somebody with more money and more knowledge is just gonna like either scoop that up or or they'll know not to buy that and i don't know anything you know what i mean like well that's what i always think yeah well you need a nice you need a good realtor for sure so you need a realtor just like to 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 like probe you when the right there's a new thing yeah. that that might be good for you yeah. even if you're looking like even if we were looking to maybe well we probably would live in it for a while but um but like you can just work with a realtor and they just like look for stuff for you yeah and send you listings and stuff like that uh, honestly in Kelowna specifically like 
it's really hard to go wrong. You're not going to buy a place that's going to be worth less in five years. It's almost not. No, of course not. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's hard to make a bad decision. And then like, right. I always, when I talk to clients, I always say like, there's objective criteria and then there's subjective. Like I could walk into a hate um, apartment or a house and hate every inch of it, but like the client might love it. Right. So mm-hmm. that's kind of the subjective part or like different locations in town. Like people like every location in Kelowna, uh, yeah. always the same as me. So it's like, I call that the subjective part of real estate or like the subjective things, but the objective part is that that property regardless is going to grow up and will be worth more. Right. And then like, yeah, there are issues with like the strata could be a nightmare where it's going to, you're going to have to pay a lot of money in the future. There could be lots of issues right. with that, uh, or might not allow dogs when you're really a dog person. So stuff like that, I think right. realtors can help you uh, navigate to make sure that you're not buying a money pit. But even if you mm-hmm. buy the money pit, it's going to be worth more in the long run over time over yeah. than renting, right? So you're, you're still not going to lose money. It might cost you more money in the while you have it, but you're still going to be up money in the long run. Like real estate is not it's not like day trading, right? You don't buy a house mm-hmm. today and sell it in five months and be like, oh, I lost money. It goes up. Yeah. Like Taylor and I talked about it. Like real estate will go up in value. It's like a yo-yo on an escalator, right? So it's going up and down the values, but over the long run. But always going, yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Yeah, no, I know. That was a really good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, it's like like, my advice to everyone is just get in the market. Like even go out of the city to buy a cheaper place. You can go to Vernon and buy cheaper places than that. Because like once you get in the Mm -hmm. market, you are in a fundamentally different position than not being in the market. Yeah. And what I'm curious about, um, when you are buying the first place, because I've heard both the ideas, like buying the first place and living in in it or never live in what you bought. Well, so why would somebody do either? So to to get in the market, you first time home buyers generally put 5% down, right? And to you to get a mortgage with 5% down, that has to be a principal residence. You have to live there. Or your, oh, your intent has to be to live there, right? So you I have see. to, you buy the place. And then if you move in six months, you're like, well, I have enough money now. This place, like over the last couple of years, places were going up 10% in value in six months. Right? That's right. insane. So like you buy a $300,000 condo in six months, you make $30,000. And you have, uh, you can then, if your mortgage is right, you can use, you can tap into that equity to buy another place. Right, so you can do that as long as your provincial or your uh, your principal residence, you can do this to move. So, um, to, but that's just with the five percent down. If once you get over twenty percent down, then you're talking about rental properties where you can put twenty percent down, and then you don't live in there. And then if the, I see. the rental, uh, if the rent makes enough money to pay for the mortgage, then that- yeah, that's that's ideal. That would be great. Yeah, because yeah. because w- I'm m- mostly thinking about this because um, we're not really like. We are in Kelowna, but then obviously we go back to Italy. We might go back to Italy for a year. Yeah. You know, can we rent that out? Like, how would that be? Is that a good idea yeah. or is it not? All those things, right? But this explains it very well. Yeah. So how long do you have to live in the place to only be putting down 5%? Uh, you're, it's all about intent, right? So they say you have to live in there for a year. But if you move mm-hmm. on six months, they're not going to come tell you, you need to put more money down, right? If, Interesting. Like, oh, okay. your intent is to move into there, and you uh, six months in, you're like, "Well, my something happened, family issue in Italy. I got to go back there." Yeah, like the government, they can't punish you. Yeah, like you're that's you're fine, right? So it's all cool. okay, perfect. But, but if you go, if you start buying a place and you just never move in, and tenants are coming in on moving day, like that, you probably that might be an issue. But if your intent yeah. is to live there, you're okay. Yeah, man, I, f- I feel like we have to pay you an hourly rate for this freaking knowledge that we just got. <laughs> this is the kind of thing which got me into real estate is I went for coffee with a realtor and he was telling me these kinds of things. It has yeah. honestly changed my mind and my wife's life like completely. 180. Yeah, I'm oh, happy, happy to hear that. That's and really all cool. we did was we got into the market without knowing any of this shit. We just got into the market and that was. Yeah. Right. So like and then the rest took care of itself. Just get your foot in the door. And that's what people have been telling me for yeah. years. But it's just like, I mean, t- to be frank, I'm still building my my like my like income and my yeah. savings and everything. And I, it's 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 probably not feasible at the exact moment. But um, but it's really good to to 
Like I had no idea about about the living there thing, although it didn't matter to me before I met Celine because I was probably going to live there and that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. But now we, mm-hmm. you know, we 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 need to travel and we need to kind of be able to be free to go where we need to go and so yeah. that's yeah. really interesting to know. <laughs> yeah, because for us the other thing is we might be able to buy here but we might also be able to buy back home. So, you know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of things yeah. like factoring in. Know, also like if you bought here like you could if you got like a two or three bedroom place, you could always have a roommate on day one that's mm-hmm. paying you rent, right? And then like, right. like yeah. when you get into the, what's called house hacking is where you can use your house to make money in different kinds of ways. I thought that kind right. of thing would be good, especially if you're not going to be there for a long period of time. So like yeah. You yeah. Or your place and you're not there. So uh, Totally. Yeah. Like there's a lot of ways. To yeah, good point. But the biggest thing yeah. is to just get in the market any way you can, really. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So... If uh, if anybody listening wants to find Matt, and obviously you can hear from this that um, he knows his stuff big time, and uh, <laughs> sharing he's sharing it openly, and I'm sure that uh, he does that on his podcast as well, which is the Kelowna Real Estate Podcast. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so you can find you can find him there. That's probably a great place to find him. But otherwise, like you know, where do you tell people to go? Maybe your website or yeah, my website is good, MacLand.ca, or my Instagram, MacLand Real Estate. Um, for active on there, like I said, um, yeah, I super accessible. Like when my phone rings, I answer it as soon as I can. Yeah. So like, I, cool. uh, yeah, yeah. And and we'll we'll link everything down below as well. We'll link uh, exactly. all your stuff and um and we'll we'll get some awesome content from this for you to to share so that you don't have to uh, create Instagram content for a a day or something or (laughs) yeah, (laughs) honestly, that's something that I tell people now. I'm like, Hey, like come, come on the show and you know, we'll give you five clips from the show and there you go. There's some content for the next few days. We'll make sure that, you know, we'll make sure it's focused on you and your message and saying cool stuff. And there you go. Now we've, we've, we've taken care of a little bit of your social media. So uh, I I mean, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. It's been awesome. Yeah. You guys are doing uh, good work over there. So. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're trying and we're trying to, to meet more people and in, in Kelowna and, and everywhere and just sort of learn whatever we can about yeah. whatever we can. And yeah. that's, yeah, one of the goals of the podcast. So, but thanks for coming on. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're super busy yeah. and, um, and yeah, maybe we'll, we'll have to reach out to you when we go to buy our first place. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Even if it's in Italy. Yeah, totally. I have, I have, <laughs> audience, I have- Beck and I have been to a town in Italy a couple of times, and uh, yeah. Hey, cool. I was thinking that. Yeah. I was yeah, thinking that. I was like, I, hmm. I can see that as well now that you say that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We were there. What Italy, are you from? Oh, I'm actually from the very north. Yeah, me too. That's, um, yeah. that's where I'm from. Really? Yeah. That's, oh. um, that's baby. Just so you know, that's really close to Cinque Terre. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool, man. Just so wow. You have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> we we spent four months up there, like oh, really? a little while back, and like it yeah. was it was really cool. I went there. I went there having learned Italian, thinking that that was going to be great. But then, but then most people that I was around were speaking German because it used to be oh, Austria, yeah, and so I'm, her parents yeah. are German, or and some of her friends, and I was just like, oh well, this like my Italian's a little bit useless. <laughs> Yeah, because we live, uh, like, I live in um, Trentino Alto Adige, which is, like, the uh, region that used to be Austria, and so a lot of people speak German. My, my mother tongue after. is German as well. Yeah, yeah. But actually, all my friends are Italian, but obviously my family is German, yeah. like, yeah. German-speaking, yeah. not That's German yeah, um, passport. Always yeah. Italian. <laughs> yeah, they're Italians, but they we speak Italians. German. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a very unique place. Italian to go there and I'll speak German. Yeah. I, I learned Italian to go there and then and then at the dinner table the only language that was ever spoken was German. Like her dad doesn't speak a, a lick of English. Yeah. But no, um, but her mom sp- spoke broken English which was really like I was grateful for that. But usually it was like her dad talking to her and then me saying what did he say and then her telling me and then he would go what did you say and she would go oh I was just telling him what you said and I was like wait what were you saying? <laughs> So and, then, it's like, and then he would speak to me in German and I would translate it to English for you. But then he would reply to you in Italian so that I would, you would, I would understand. I, or I it would talk to him mess. in Italian. It was a complete mess of languages. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Anyways, thank you for coming on, man. This was, uh, this was super you. fun. Really good to learn about, about real estate. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, if anybody wants to, to learn more or work with Matt, uh, just check the show notes out and all the links will be down there. And have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you, guys.